If you take a look at the banks, the financial sector overall, banks are a component of them. Other stocks are in there as well. But specifically with regard to valuation for the banks, you talk about that run. The Spider S&P Bank ETF, which is a more equal-weighted index of some of the larger and mid-scale banks in America, has actually outperformed the S&P 500, thanks in part to some of the smaller and mid-sized banks. But if you take a look at the valuation story, Price to book values are some of the metrics that a lot of investors use to look at how they value banks. Specifically, some of the banks that we know and talk about often that have premium price to book valuations include JP Morgan Chase, US Bank Corp, and Bank of Hawaii. JP Morgan Chase, about 1.6 times book. You can see US Bank Corp, 1.8 times book, and Bank of Hawaii trained at over two and a half times book value. As opposed to some of the other valued companies in, on a price to book basis. Wells Fargo trades at about a 22% premium to book value. So on the lower end of the scale with regard to banks on a relative basis, Bank of America at about 1.2 times and Citigroup actually trades at a discount overall to the market. What's interesting about the way that these things are shaping up, it is the banks that are going to be a big deal for many investors, but it's also the non-bank financial institutions that have been driving a lot of the gains within the S&P 500 financial sector so far. So as we focus on bank valuations, those are important. But the returns, if you look at them stock specifically, guys, have been driven by some of the other names out there, not just the Citigroup's Bank of America's and J.P. Morgan's of the world, guys. Tom, I think the, the really interesting thing when you look at those big six banks uh, that you just mentioned is, is the diversity that we see uh, across those. You wouldn't really see that, say, across the different PE multiples of, of Staples companies, not to the same extent anyway. Part of that is explained uh, by their relative ROEs, which, of course, uh, plays into to the book value. The other interesting thing for me is, is clearly you can't really compare book value, price to book value, to other sectors, but on a PE multiple, which isn't perfect for banks. They're very cheap relative to the rest of the market. And they have been cheap for a while. And, and that's been the big rub on the banks, right? Well, for this idea that these are on a valuation basis may appear attractive to some investors, but that really hasn't gotten a lot of folks to really buy into the bank trade yet. What is curious, though, I mentioned Sarah Wilfred, the, th the five actually, now they count it, the five best performing S&P 500 financial stocks so far this year to date are actually non-bank, non-traditional bank financial institutions. Names like Ameriprise, MSCI, also names like Synchrony Financial. Also, if you take a look at the overall picture, if those gains continue, is it those stocks that are going to be the drivers for those returns, not necessarily traditional banks? So even within banks, Wilfred, to your point, it's hard to look at maybe insurance companies versus asset managers versus, you know, uh, exchanges compared to some of these banks as well, and certainly not from an ROE perspective. And, and, Dom, I guess the other point, uh, to state the obvious, is uh, what makes these look expensive in a relative sense. Compare them to Europe or, or Japan's banks, uh, which, of course, you can do a price-to-tangible book comparison, and they, and they are significantly uh, uh, valued compared to that, where you have 0 0.3, 0 0.4 times book uh, for some of those big names. Well, and, we we're gonna, well. and we're going to get a clearer picture, right, because later on this week, Thursday, Friday, we get UBS, Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank on the European side. So... The financial is very much a focus so far, but still, the U.S. trade has been a relatively interesting one. We'll see if these guys actually get investors involved more on a larger scale basis, like other sectors in the market, like consumer staples and technology as well.